Greetings, open source fans, and welcome to today's conversation. Uh, open source program manager Brian here with some exciting news. The Manjaro project has agreed to become the latest member of the GitLab open source partner community. I'm super excited about this news, delighted to have them with me today to talk about their project, to welcome them officially, and to help us learn a little bit more about Manjaro. With me today are Philip and Bernhard, and I am just, gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. I'm just delighted, uh, delighted to talk to you today. Hello. My pleasure. <laughs> um, let's start at the beginning. For folks who might not be aware of the Manjaro project, talk a little bit about it. What is Manjaro? Uh, what's its, you know, who's its ideal tar or target user? It's depending who is uh, finding Manjaro. It's a lot of people uh, finding us and using us. It's developers, users, experienced ones, and normal ones. So all the bunch out there most likely might use Manjaro. And what is Manjaro? Just if you had to give up, if you have to give a 30 second summary for somebody who's never heard of it. Well, Manjaro is a Linux distribution. I uh, started as a hobby project back in the days. We are about 13 years old now and uh, was more or less a, a fun project. And lately we became a company. This is also now three years ago. So yeah, it's a lot of things happened with Manjaro and most likely it's based on Arch, but with a little bit twist. Nice, great. Um, so you said you've been in existence for about 13 years? Exactly, yes. That's Round incredible. about something like that. Yeah. And how big is your community? Depending which community uh, you look for, the development community is about uh, 16 core members, uh, eight moderators for the forums and uh, social media, and uh, registered users on our GitLab instance. We have uh, more than 8,700 zip and uh, projects also around 3,300. So it's wow. a large number. And a yes, lot in our forums are users, so yeah. Got it, got it. So several, you know, close to 10,000 people using your GitLab instance. That's right. <laughs> yeah, incredible. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, your use of GitLab. Uh, how how do you how does the the Manjaro project use GitLab um, as part of your your everyday operations making Manjaro run? Well, we started yeah. using GitLab for 2018. Uh, until then, we were using GitHub, and uh, what uh, looked very appealing to us was the opportunity to actually self-host all our code. Mm -hmm. As Philip already said, we had uh, we have already between three thousand and four thousand individual projects, which means basically packages or or our own applications. And the nice thing is that we were able to install GitLab on our own server, so it's really always our code. Everything, of course, it's it's open source, but uh, so it feels really good to to self-host and to have our own control about what our source code is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind and, of uh, digital sovereignty. So basically really with mostly storage of our code mm -hmm. and uh, of course, Git development, uh, which is of course standard with uh, open source and other software mm -hmm. projects anyway. And uh, most recently we have also been uh, using the CI functionality more and more. Because uh, over the last uh, few years, Manjaro has been growing really exponentially mm. and our developer group has not so much. So we are already still really a small group of people serving a, an enormous amount of packages. So it's uh, becoming more and more important to automize stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've slowly been uh, uh, starting to, to use... Uh, uh, automated uh, scripts which are triggered by commits mm -hmm. or also we are using external build platforms we are serving a lot of uh, arm hardware also uh -huh. so there is some uh, exotic uh, software that needs to be compiled on certain platforms and the way we do that is partly with gitlab runners so we mm -hmm. install the runner on whatever hardware we need the stuff to be built on 
I see. And then we trigger the builds with the YAML files on GitLab and the runners get triggered automatically. So whenever we, we commit the change, packages get built automatically. And uh, the very latest uh, topic we are still working on is automatically committing the actually built packages to our repos so that users can, the packages the users install. Uh, at the moment, we're still doing it, the, the commit uh, of the packages we do is still more or less manually or at least scripted because mm -hmm. this is a very a very high security concern of course so we are very careful about how we optimize this mm -hmm. and uh this is still in development but uh, the goal of course is that we push any changes to our code and it gets it automatically triggers the build and automatically pushes it to the repo and updates the users installs right right that's so the goal Every, every time you push code, it triggers automatic builds for various architectures. How many architectures are you like you building for every time? Well, architectures is two. It's it's AR64 is the, okay. the ARM single board computers. Yep. And uh, until recently, we also had uh, um, uh, 32 bit, ah. which is which we stopped deploying. But mm -hmm. uh, of course, 64. 64 bit wheel right right and how many packages are you managing as part of the project these days i'm not even sure i mean <laughs> a few thousand yeah a few thousand so, it, so... It's, in, it's in different groups so i have never counted them but they are <laughs> growing more and more of course we also have the the plasma development packages which is actual git packages okay. this means that um, we we scan upstream development of Plasma. And uh, when there are changes, these packages get built there on a, in a separate repo. So this is uh, uh, targeting developers specifically. It's mm -hmm. not intended for, for user installs. So those packages alone are, I think, I think uh, around 1,000 packages, which get built more or less daily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, every day. Okay, so several thousand. And then are the, yep. the regular packages. So if we know that we have 3,300 projects corresponding to repos, so that's the, the regular packages on yeah. top of that. Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. That's a lot. And, yeah. and you are in your, your, you said your development team is maybe what, eight, 12 people? Uh, what, what are you? How many developers, real active developers? Yeah, Philip, you said 16. I'm 16. not even sure. 16 yeah. <laughs> we have, and we have in GitLab around 3,339 projects. Okay. So that allows a group of 16 people to manage more than 3,000 <laughs> 3, projects. It's really impressive, guys. Um, what What other challenges? Obviously, that's one challenge that using GitLab helps you overcome, right? Being able to manage that many things with that relatively few people and mostly volunteers, I would assume, right? Um, Absolutely, yeah. Which is just incredible. Any, what other challenges have you overcome uh, since you switched to GitLab? Well, in the past, the mm -hmm. uh, issue was always, uh, if you look at GitHub, uh, you have a lot of repositories in GitHub and you don't know what's going on. So uh, the fine thing with the Manjaro is from the pro uh, project management uh, point of view that you can go to activities and see over the groups of you uh, maintaining uh, what's going on there. So you can mm -hmm. see, okay, this graphical package got built or this application has an issue. So many issues are opened. Uh, these are the epics we should look at. So from the management point of view, it's a lot of advantages over GitHub when you use mm. GitLab. Because mm. you get some insight into what's going on upstream, a little bit more insight into what's going on upstream. Is that what you're saying? Like with upstream packages or? No, it's like the management point of view. If you have this activity views, you can see it. This is like uh, the mix read and so on. And a uh, lot of open source uh, projects like GNOME and KDE are switching also over to GitLab. So it's like the same flow. And gotcha. Now I, I understand. Look, 
what uh, upstream is doing. So if I'm into frameworks in KDE, then I can look in the group of frameworks and see what's going on there. Right. And since Arch Linux also switched to GitLab, I can look, for example, in the packages list. So I find the stuff very fast. That makes sense. So it's easier to get insights into what others in, in the ecosystem are doing, um, especially if they're using GitLab with activity feeds and things. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Great. Um, what What are you working on right now? What's What's the, What's the big uh, project in Manjaro land? What What's next? Could if you want to say something about that? <laughs> Well, uh, depends. We have many projects. So the latest project, what we actually do is uh, the new uh, yearly release of Manjaro itself. So we will have uh, Plasma, GNOME, and XFC again as our main editions. Mm -hmm. And we are working on some commercial projects, which we cannot tell yet. I see. But sure. it will be great to see um, how that will go and uh, GitLab helps us a lot to achieve that because also our commercial partners see where's the project, what we do actually, and they can uh, track the issues as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you release man new versions of Manjaro once a year and that's coming up? It depends. No, so release, mostly uh, like twice a year or three times a year, less. it depends. Okay. Oh, okay. So the next release is slated for what time? Well, we actually wanted to have it released already, but we have so much other things to do that we have to find time to actually test it and finding the right stable a snapshot of Arch uh, is kind of hard because a lot of uh, kernel regressions are ongoing, graphical mm -hmm. regressions are there. We found recently a vulnerability in our package manager, PAMAC, so we have to still tackle that. And on top of that, uh, some people are on vacation, so... We have to time it a little bit and yeah. maybe in one, two months, uh, we might see the release. Great. Great. What's, what's the most exciting thing that you've seen somebody do with Manjaro, you know, uh, put it on a rocket ship or use it to power a laser or what, 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 what is, what's your, what's the, your favorite uh, example of Manjaro in the wild? I mean, what's, what's currently really hot is all the new, hardware platforms that are appearing on the market. Mm -hmm. Some of them we are experimenting with. Uh, recently, we, as a, so we mostly commercially, we, we collaborate with hardware producers. And for example, with Star Labs, uh, which is a British company, we have uh, produced some very nice laptops. And also with Slimbook, we, we produced a, a really hardcore gaming machine. It was pretty fancy, cool. and uh, the mini PCs are very popular at the moment. So they mm. are very small form factor, they're just this size and very very powerful, like a desktop computer. And then the the very small formats, of course, they, I think in the very near future there are very exciting projects coming up, which we cannot yet talk about. But uh, sure. so tiny tiny form factors with uh, a lot of power and a lot of capability. Uh, so we are very often directly working together with the hardware producers. So we're uh, also the, the platform which Manjaro is based on, Arch Linux, is very much on the, on the forefront of, uh, of uh, hardware support. So that's really an advantage for us if we want to support very new and very, uh, yeah, very fresh hardware. That's really one uh, very good opportunity for us. So yeah, I guess the mini PCs maybe recently were very very exciting, and uh, also with Pine sixty four we had a, a lot of very interesting projects with the uh, the Pine book and the Pine phones, and so new hardware and new challenges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also. Those are the, the biggest challenges also. Those are yeah, very exciting, sure. but then of course, developing a Linux phone is really not something yet you can do even in a few years. It's really, wow. but uh, of course you learn a lot and uh, you find out about the possibilities and about the challenges and about the roadblocks. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> always, a, always a learning experience in open source for yeah, sure. Exactly. Yeah. Well, if folks want to get involved with the Manjaro project, what's the best way for them to get involved with the project? 
them anyway. So we have the forum where people can participate in. We have a wiki where people can document stuff. Then we have several translation projects where people can simply translate in their native language. And of course, testing, uh, spreading the word, uh, making YouTube channels and so on. All that is possible. Great. Where, where can people go to find how to do that? Directly to our homepage, manjaro.org. And there they find uh, all the, the nice information where they can download the stuff, where they can see which hardware we support, what uh, news are coming up, and so stuff is all listed there. So best, our homepage. Great. What And what do you need most right now? Do you need translators? Do you need front-end developer? What do you need most right now? What kind of help? Mostly testers. So if there's a new release or a daily release, simply test it out. Give us feedback, uh, what we are missing or what the current issues are. If a new stable uh, update uh, release is coming, uh, then a lot of people are already giving us feedback in the forum. So it's like Manjaro. If you have a problem and go to the forums, most likely after five minutes, someone is answering something to your problem. And uh, sometimes you even mm -hmm. get the solution really fast. Great. All right. Well, uh, thank you for that. And welcome once again to the partner community. I'm just delighted to speak with you and happy to welcome you. Thanks for today's conversation. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. All right. Looking forward to working with you more. <laughs>